Hey, everybody. Welcome to Fridays with Steve. Um, I'm your host, Steve Thompson from Apex Digital Solutions. We spend a lot of time talking about uh, teams and teams rooms, and we're going to broaden the conversation a little bit. We have a great guest um, from Neat. Sean is going to um, show us a lot of their product line and, and frankly, their innovation in this space. Um, there's a there's a there's kind of a, a spectrum of experiences, and so I wanted uh, to have uh, to have Sean on to really talk about um, Neat's perspective on the market because they're sort of embracing that spectrum um, in a different way than than some of the other uh, you know vendors that that you might know or that we might have talked about um, in the past. So super excited to have them here. And, and, and showing all of their innovation in the space because there's there's this in-between space that, that they have a couple of ways, whether it's the neat board or the neat frame um, to, to, to address. And, and we're super excited that we're partnering with them to bring those things to market. Uh, talk a little bit about, about hot desking and phone booths and some of those sort of intermediate experiences. And um, Sean will really get into, uh, like I said, their product line, their innovation, um, really interesting features, and and he's uh, he's going to do it. He set it up in a way that it's very experiential. I really love when we're able to have people on that sort of break the fourth wall and really give you a sense of of how these things might look and feel um, in your environment. It's part of the reason that we've invested um, in Neat and in our showroom in Southfield, Michigan. Um, to have the ability to bring customers in and say, hey, this is what it would feel like in a large training room or a signature room. And now with the NEAT devices we have and the partnership with NEAT, uh, we, can, we can articulate those experiences as well. And so like I mentioned, um, we really think about Teams devices and spaces kind of across this spectrum, right? There's that personal workspace. Um, whether it's docs or whether it's great devices for Teams Voice. Um, and then obviously we do a lot of work and, and, and talk a lot on, on this podcast about um, that shared space, right? Signature rooms, everything from huddle to large training rooms, really kind of that, that fixed experience. Neat does a great job of bringing that fixed experience to market as well. And I'm sure Sean will talk a little bit about that. But there's this middle space that um, uh, we want to be able to address for customers as well. And honestly, it's one I think that's kind of evolved over um, our time with teams. We've been challenged by some of these really large sort of open spaces um, and I think initially we tried to mount things on walls um, and uh, with, you know, whether it was movable dividers or walls of windows or long runs back to control equipment, it's been kind of a challenge. And so, you know, whether it's Surface Hub or neat frames or uh, uh, neat boards, um, you can really address with a, more of a, a movable all in one kind of uh, device that can that can bring that experience without um, you know, fixing uh, it in a space. Um, if you think about it, you know, an open lunchroom or something where naturally people could gather in a corner or around around a couch and be able to collaborate because the devices, you know, move with them. Um, and so just transparently, we've sort of evolved in this space as well. I remember a couple of customer scenarios with you know, uh, movable dividers and, you know, a mixture of lunchroom space and, and, and more loungy casual space that they wanted to teams enable. Um, and we sort of attacked it, frankly, the wrong way. We like, well, how are we going to mount these things on walls? And where do the controls go when it's divided versus together? Um, something like the neat, uh, the neat board makes for a great way to sort of bring the collaboration to the people. There's also this concept of bookable desks and workspaces, right? And there's really kind of three scenarios and, and Sean's going to show us a, a couple of them in action in, in, uh, uh, in, in his demonstration, you know, uh, reserving upon plug-in, right? Setting your location in Teams to a, a flexible and, and, and workable space. 
Um, this one's really cool, um, the QR code. Um, I'm showing a neat panel here, stock video from Microsoft, um, but Sean's gonna be able to show us um, how this is one of the key scenarios with the neat frame. Um, as we were getting ready for production today, uh, we were chatting and, and I made sure I let him know that we, we love our two neat frames. Uh, one is a kind of a, a bookable desk uh, that people can work at, kind of a uh, uh, just a, a sit down and, and join a Teams meeting kind of experience, even if you don't have your laptop with you. The other one we're using in a vastly different scenario as a virtual uh, receptionist, as a front desk. Um, we have an office suite. Um, we don't have a full-time reception and an open door. And because of that, uh, the neat frame has really provided uh, a cool solution to that. These can also be discoverable. You can report on how they're being utilized. I know a lot of us are coming back to the office and you know the notion of everybody with a fixed office that they use once a week, you know, um, back of the envelope math says you end up with 5X, you know, the space you actually need. Um, and so we're working with a lot of customers moving to a more modular and a more flexible space when it comes to their time in the office. So with that, let's go ahead and bring uh, Sean into the conversation. The blank slide was my cue to um, uh, bring him in and, and uh, make sure we can we can see he, uh, all the devices in their glory. So Sean, thanks for being with us. And I know you've got a lot to talk about um, with this innovative uh, product line from Neat. So where do you wanna start? You know, uh, Steve, I think I'm going to start with the experience because uh, all of our products provide a, a, a similar experience because we would like to make sure that everywhere you go, you have that consistent experience. So the first thing I want to talk about is video framing and how we chose to do it uh, in order to be able to find people uh, in the way we do that. Um, as you see, as I walk around my space here, you'll notice that my camera does a frame and follow like a lot of folks do. Um, but one of the things that we do different is how we are finding people. Uh, we're not listening for voices using that audio tracking to be able to find somebody because what we've noticed is if I were to walk from one side of the room to the other and not say a word with an audio tracking system, um, the camera won't find me until I speak again. But because we are not listening for voices, we're looking for people-shaped objects. So my cameras are looking for you know people-shaped objects like me. So I can move from one side of the room to the other without saying a word and my camera will smoothly frame and follow me, right? Uh, and that's one of the first things I wanna point out just so you can see how nice and smooth that experience is. But a big part of what NEAT does in the experience of that room is, is when we start talking about, like Steve mentioned, us getting back into these conference rooms. We start bringing people back in. Everybody went home and got used to sitting in front of their computers and, and having a, a nice personal view. Uh, but as we do move people back into the conference room, we're starting to deal with the challenges of now of trying to figure out how to replicate the experience that we got used to using when we were at home versus back here in the office. So I've got friends with me that I can use to help me with this part of the demo, because again, I don't need people to talk. I just need people shaped objects. So as I spread my people out here and get everybody present to you, what you're going to notice is our problem statement. The only way to see everybody in a conference room in the old days was to zoom out as far as you can to be able to capture everybody in the room, right? But now what do you see? You see lots of space, lots of room, and not enough people, right? So how do we fix that? And like I said to you earlier, we are doing object detection, looking for individuals, looking for people-shaped objects. So we can do more than just this look here. We can get rid of everything else around us and leave you only what you need, which is the people in the room. This is what's important in a room like this. And we don't do that as a native application or as a native option, we don't do just active speaker tracking looking for the person who's talking because we want you to have the choice to look at anybody you want to in here. Because if you were in the room with me, you wouldn't be forced to stare at me while I talk. You could look around the room, engage that nonverbal reaction that we get every day in our everyday lives that we realize that people are you know, telling us things without saying a word. 
And I want to give you, I want to, I want to give you, I want to give you full credit. Streamyard's cutting off John Cusack's head and replacing it with me. That's a Streamyard piece. We've actually, Uh uh, and in the background, uh, the neat device is doing exactly what we expect, right? Um, And and framing everybody. And like you said, they're all being very quiet, and so it's just really finding the people in the room. That's right. That's right. So we do this framing in both a group and individual basis. So you notice a second ago when I first started this framing, everybody was framed as a group. So this is a possible uh, a, a function to use as well. So um, I'm going to go ahead and replace my folks here for a little bit, get everybody out of the way, and then we'll talk about some of the products that we're, that we're uh, bringing to market here to help with um, hot desking, with collaboration, uh, with interaction, uh, all, all of the above. So. What did your boss say when you requisitioned six cardboard cutouts of uh, Hollywood stars? <laughs> I'll have to tell you, uh, 90% of the people that work at Neat have cardboard cutouts. This is kind of how we got going because when we came to market, uh, it was January of 2020, uh, and we all know what happened mm-hmm. a few months later. So sure. all of a sudden we had to figure out how can we show our products without people in the room. So uh, our first option was because we're not listening for people, we're looking for shapes. Uh, so we can use these cutouts. So uh, it's uh, interesting across Neat to see all the different cutouts that are across uh, the company uh, worldwide. Everybody has cutouts. So it's uh, almost regional as to what, what's popular. So Nice. Yeah. So uh, let me first point out what you see behind me here. I have two different collaboration boards. I've got a 65-inch here. This is our Neat board 65. And I have our 50-inch here. Okay. Um, both of these devices are running Teams Rooms software. Uh, as a native application. So what you see on screen is the Teams Room interface uh, for their touch devices. And on screen, I've got everything I need to start a call, to uh, to make a phone call if you have that phone license, um, to do share content using HDMI. Uh, I can also do a walk-up and whiteboard session on both of these devices. Also over here, you, sh- you should also see all of the um, meetings that you've invited the device to, and you can join any just by hitting that button, hitting the join. I also invited these devices to Zoom calls. So I can join a Zoom call from my Microsoft Teams room, right? Uh, these devices are fully capacitive, they're, they're uh, a capacitive touch screen, so I can use my fingers on them, or I can use one of the two passive markers that comes with this one. This device comes with an active marker, okay? Um, the cool thing about the 50 is that we were able to get more creative with the mounting hardware because it's a lighter device. So now we're giving kind of an accessibility play here with a 14 inches of play up and down on our adaptable mount. So this mount's available on this cart here, or you can get the mount just as a wall mount, uh, or if you'd like it just to be a static mount, we have that one as well. Um, yeah, the board 65. I, I wanna, a- yeah, I want to ask you a question. I mean, uh, you heard me, I think, in the run up talk about um, we're really embracing more frames. Um, I talked about the open and kind of the flex space. But we're also finding them to be a great solution in rooms that don't already have existing displays or have walls of windows or, you know, people that are thinking sort of financially conscious uh, around, hey, let's let's get one of these things. We can roll it where we need it. I mean, are you seeing that kind of adoption start to ramp up because we're using them in traditional rooms as well? Absolutely. I would say these are wonderful to install as a permanent install in your room. Uh, with the wall mount, but with the cart, it makes it a, a nice uh, mobile uh, hot, uh, I'm sorry, a mobile uh, flex unit. You want to bring it into that large open area like you mentioned earlier. You want to have a meeting uh, over here, but you only have a 12 by 12 square that people are going to be sitting in. We actually have a function called subject boundary where you could set the video and you could squash that video zone because we are looking for people. So if people are wandering by or maybe you have a conference room with windows, you want to get rid of those uh, external people that may be walking past, or maybe you've got pictures on your wall of people. We are going to frame them. So with our subject boundary, we can get rid of all that excess space around you, uh, get rid of the people that you don't want to see, uh, and, and still have that wonderful meeting experience within the boundary that you set. So these are wonderful flex devices. Very nice. Thank you. Uh, the, uh, the, the other thing about this board 50 is it has an output. So you mentioned existing tech. Um, The 65 is a wonderful standalone unit, no outputs, but it's so big, it does so well when you bring it in, it's plenty big for a room. Um, You wheel that 50 into an existing room with an existing maybe a a wall plate and a projector or wall plate and a TV, you can use that output to get a second output for your team's room. 
uh, or you can do a mirror of it. So we have some options to be able to utilize existing tech, even with this being a flex device. We link into a room that doesn't have video now. You bring it in, now it's got video and you can use the local TV. Nice, that's a nice feature. Okay. So the next thing I want to talk to you about is going to be this neat frame that we have here. Uh, the device that I have here on the table. I'm going to get rid of my buddies here because I don't need everybody to be seeing now. This device here is, <laughs> it's a 15.6 inch tall by 8 inch wide. Uh, what was originally intended to be a personal video conference unit, right? It does have a quarter 20 mounting screw because so it can be secured down um, wherever you'd like to put it as a kiosk or whatever. But it does act wonderful when using it as a personal device on your desk. You can put it into companion mode with your teams and get all of your personal teams, um, your contacts, your meetings. Uh, you can do some whiteboarding on this. You can um, sift through OneDrive files. Again, it's a wonderfully um, collaborative experience with your team's environment when you're in companion mode. Now, fast forward to today, Microsoft has come out with other user interfaces to make this more useful outside of just that personal device, right? So. I know Steve has mentioned hot desking. I've actually got this one set up as a hot desk now. So this could be placed in that phone booth or maybe in a, a small huddle space where you want to give that space video, but you want to give people a chance to have a personal experience in there. So they could walk into this room, use their phone, scan this QR code and the identity, their team's identity will recognize this and allow them to reserve this device for an allotted amount of, you know, for a time that they choose. Um, and then when, once that time starts, they will have this device as their own. All their meetings, all their contacts, whatever licensing they have, phone, um, whatever, will all be on this device, giving them use of the 50 megapixel camera up top, the three microphone array built in, the speakers, or if they want to plug in a, a headset, you can plug in a headset or use a Bluetooth headset, right? So it gives you lots of options to use in a hot desk mode. But when that time's up, it will clear you out and kick you out of the call. So you do get some warnings along the way saying, hey, you have 10 minutes left. Would you like to add more time if it's available? And if you don't, then just know they'll kick you out because again, that's a security risk. We don't want to leave anything behind on this when we're done using it. So that's one of the functions that we're seeing it used a lot. That's, um, that's exactly how we're using one of our frames. Um, it's in a uh, kind of a loungy space, but a loungy space that has a closing door. And so, um, you know, if, if you're, you know, in our sort of open office experience, but you need to take a call with HR or a recruiting call or something like that, you can leave your laptop at your desk, go back, scan the QR code with your phone and hop on a more private meeting um, using the frame. And that's exactly how uh, we're, we're using it. And it's working out great. That's awesome to hear. I will say that I mentioned early on the experience level, they're all the same. So this little frame is going to frame multiple people up to eight individuals. If we oh, had it in a room with people, we do up to eight. Same technology I just showed off on my Bar Pro for larger spaces. We're doing that on the frame as well. So let's say you put this in that little huddle space or a small you know, room where you get two or three people in there and they're still having to sit around a little round table. It's going to cut everything out and just make it more personal. You don't need to see that room. You need to see the people on the call. So that's, uh, again, something that's also available on this uh, as you use it in, in any mode. Um, there's one more mode that Microsoft has that makes it very useful outside of that personal mode, and that's going to be more of the virtual attendant. Um, you want to maybe maybe you have a part of the building, you have somewhere that is unstaffed or un, unmanned, but people still wander in with questions. Maybe they need you, you need a virtual kiosk. You need some sort of way to communicate with people in an area where you don't have somebody staffed. Uh, this can be set up as a virtual attendant or as a kiosk where you can designate a button or two or three or whatever you decide up front. Uh, and with those buttons, you can dial uh, whoever you've designated to be on the far end of that call, making this a wonderful just little kiosk where you can walk up. I have a question. Uh, if I'm in education, I, have, I need to get hold of student services. Let me hit that button. Uh, hi, I'm Sean. I need to know how to get to wing, blah, blah, blah. They help me out. The call's over. I'm out. The thing we can do here is set that subject boundary down to a three foot by three foot square, uh, giving this thing only visibility of somebody who's standing right in front of it. And as people wander by or people standing in the queue behind them, they won't be framed in and they won't even be uh, recognized as, as you know people on video. Yep, you and uh, one of one of your uh, um, hardware partners um, actually solved our issue at our at our office. Um, we have a frame mounted outside the suite, completely secure, right? Because it's a public space, um, and we use it as a virtual receptionist. 
Uh, most importantly, we never miss a UPS delivery now because we can buzz the door from anywhere, um, let UPS in and drop off packages secure. Um, but that was only enabled recently because of the innovation of the neat frame. That's awesome to hear. I, I, I love hearing about how people are using it because uh, it is an interesting device. So it's fun to see how people decide to use it in their environment. Nice. So what is that thing sitting in front of you right there? I, I, I so, recognize that from some other vendors, but I here. think I think yours does some interesting things. Yes. Yeah, so this is our neat center. This is a device that we haven't even started shipping yet. We are in um, we are in an early field trial motion right now with a, with some select customers uh, throughout the world. Um, this is our first companion device. So we do have um, a, a set of room devices. We've got a bar which is for room sizes of 10 by 20, a bar pro, which is what I'm on, room sizes of up to like 20 by 35. Then I've got the two boards behind me. All of these are considered in our world, our room devices or the video codec. This is a companion device. So this device must be paired with one of those other devices. It's not gonna be a device you buy on its own and use it by itself. Um, what it's going to do is it provides a better experience, a more immersive experience in those rooms that we've already got our tech in. Um, this has a, a series of lenses on it to give a 360 degree view of the room, as well as 16 more microphones right here. And this is all connected over one LAN cable. So this is a PoE device. Okay. I don't have this physically connected back to my Bar Pro. I do have it paired over the network um, using a virtual pairing over the network that our devices are able to talk to each other and communicate and be able to uh, pass the video and audio back to our other device. So how does this thing work, you ask? Well, right now you've been listening to me on this device the whole time because the microphones are picking me up. I've been sitting pretty close to this device. But what this device really is, is here for is it, it kind of addresses that, that thing that happens in conference rooms often where the, the focus of the conversation shifts from up there to more of an internal conversation where we're looking across the table and we're talking to people in the room. And what Center does is it does some directional recognition to notice which way I'm facing to be able to understand that maybe it could capture me from a better angle here. So the, the other thing that we're providing here with this, the experience is to be able to walk to the front of a room where traditionally my front of room lens would be right here. And then if I turn around and start presenting to the people in the room, you see the back of my head, but we don't want you to see that. We wanna be able to make sure that if I'm a presenter in a room with neat products, that I can still be seen by the people on the far end as well as the people in the room. So this device is providing some more uh, flexibility in these conference spaces to give the people in the room the ability to meet how they want, look where they want, and, uh, and still be able to keep the people on the far end, uh, you, uh, engaged in the call. Yeah, I, I, it's, it's funny how the world has changed. Um, uh, we're, I've become so used to seeing people in a frame um, and, and, and just a very personal view uh, like you have now, like I have now. And when we start mixing in people in conference rooms and it's that wide shot, it's actually kind of off-putting. Um, I've become so used to being able to see every single person um, you know, as sort of a, a direct meeting attendee. And it seems like this, this center device um, is really designed to bring that experience into the rooms um, to really help everybody else have that continuing experience. It, it's, it's funny how some of the work from home tech uh, actually feels a little bit better than some of the tech we have in our offices these days. Yeah, I would agree. Again, it comes down to what we got used to uh, in that that um, that strange uh, blocked year out of our life that we all went home and uh, and and had to create a whole new experience, a whole new workflow um, you know, for those of us that got lucky enough to be able to go home and still work. Right. Um, we had to learn how to meet remotely and how to uh, use video. Uh, I remember early on the uh, the turning the camera on adoption was pretty low. Um, and, and as we got further and further into the pandemic, we started seeing more and more cameras come on. And now here we are, uh, wh wherever we are, post-pandemic, whatever it looks like, cameras are on all the time. Uh, so we're very video aware now. Um, and, and we got so used to that experience, we've got to feel like we've got to make sure that we can provide that experience even when we get back into a conference room. Yeah, so you've done a great job showing this. Uh, sort of end user experience. I guess my last question before I let you go, um, just to make sure everybody's aware, I'm sure I've got some admins watching and things like that. You've also invested a tremendous amount and are doing a lot of innovation on the back end. 
um, firmware updates, management tools, integration with the Teams portal. I don't know, maybe a, a quick couple of thoughts on, on, on what Neat's doing in that space. Absolutely. So I will tell you about our firmware updates. We do have, uh, we, we out of box when you set up our devices, um, we, we have our firmware updates set to automatic. So that's usually the easiest way to deal with it because we do have our devices check in throughout the day to, to see if there's an update available, an Android patch, which by the way, we are uh, 100% an Android environment. So we're running okay. Microsoft Teams rooms for Android, which is a, uh, a Microsoft Teams licensed, um, you know, uh, version. We are, we are fully certified with Microsoft Teams. Um, and so with that, um, we also have a management platform, right, called Neat Pulse that we can manage our Neat devices specifically. But with that, we also get a chance to push out uh, our software from the Neat to do remote control from our Neat Pulse to uh, create configuration profiles from Neat Pulse, all the while still being able to use Teams Admin Center to manage the Teams settings, your Teams firmware, um, and, and also your, your, just your Teams meeting settings. Um, we are also uh, providing with Neat Pulse uh, some SLAs and our extended warranties is all part of Neat Pulse as well. Um, we are giving away the command, I'm sorry, the control portion for free to our customers. So if you buy one Neat device, you can automatically enroll in our cloud-based management portal, which gives you full remote access into the devices, full control over them, um, analytics, um, logs, reporting, all of that, uh, all through our cloud-based management tool called Pulse. Yeah, Sean, this has all been great. Um, you know, we're super happy with the partnership. Um, you really bring some innovative things to market, whether it's uh, the frames or the boards, as well as having a product line that addresses the static room. So thanks for joining me today. Love to have you back in the near future. Looks like you guys are bringing more and more stuff to market. Um, and and thanks for uh, uh, thanks for being a great partner. Thank you, Steve. Thank you for having me as well. We love you guys as well. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks, Sean. All right. That's amazing, uh, amazing stuff from our friends at Neat. Um, uh, like, I, like I said, I mean, one of the one of the things that that I've experienced throughout my whole career is, you know, you're the best at, at selling. You're the best at supporting the things that you use every day. And and, and those frames uh, have have really satisfied two sort of niche experiences with in our own organization, right? Um, whether it's getting up, taking that personal call, that that thing where you need to shut a door, you didn't, you don't want to move your laptop around, you want to sit down on the couch and take a call. Um, we've got a frame device with the QR code, like Sean showed, ready to go for for our employees and frankly even our guests um, when they need it. Um, the other uh, uh, the other use of the frame in our in our environment is exactly that. I know a lot of people are in you know suites that have access from shared spaces. Not a lot of us have uh, have receptionists or front desks anymore, um, and it's a really cool, elegant solution. Um, you do have to, as of right now, get the uh, secure mounting bracket shipped from Europe. Uh, Neat started as a European company, and so um, this particular piece of hardware uh, we we had to order and, and bring across the pond. Uh, couldn't be happier with it, though. It secured the device exactly where we need it outside the suite. We have a remote control for the door in case there's no one in suite, and we can get those secure UPS um, deliveries, FedEx deliveries. Um, and so this is what we're passionate about. This is what we deliver for our customers each and every day. Um, hundreds of customers, hundreds of projects, great innovative partnerships with vendors like Neat, and really um, bringing it all together for our customers uh, to make these solutions um, really sing. Uh, I, I asked that last question of, of, of Sean, because one of the interesting journeys we've also been on transparently is, is getting back into the world of hardware a little bit more, right? There was sort of a, a lull period where everything was uh, everything was in the software and, and everything was, you know, either, you know, on-prem or esoteric in the cloud kinds of software solutions. But now you're really creating, uh, you know, a, a solution that is delivered both in the hardware and in the software. So having something like Pulse, having that level of control and insight into the devices is super critical um, for us as we deliver these solutions. So your next steps, uh, if you're a current customer, reach out to your account executive or drop a note to sales at apexdigital.com. As always, um, if you want some slides, you want some uh, uh, contacts, you want to get your 
get your project started or have a conversation about this space, just reach out to me, S. Thompson at apexdigital.com. Happy to have that conversation. Check out our website. Um, check out uh, Neat's website. Um, amazing, amazing products, including the center device coming to market um, and really can deliver a full end to end experience for Microsoft Teams in your space. He mentioned Zoom, uh, you know, they support other platforms. Um, you know, direct guest join is something that we talk to our customers about in those, you know, heterogeneous environments. And so it's great to hear that, uh, you know, they embrace the whole environment. So thanks for joining me today on Fridays with Steve, and I look forward to seeing you next time.